Hello there. The President of France, Emmanuel Macron, has passed new laws in order to more strictly control immigration. Q lefty meltdown. The people of France have had enough and their government has been forced to respond. New laws are coming in that weakens measures that would have allowed some immigrants residency permits and extends the amount of time immigrants must be in the country before they can get welfare benefits or housing benefits if they're unemployed. It also includes measures to set migrant quotas, making it harder for immigrants to bring their children with them. And crucially, it makes it easier to deport the more undesirable elements from the ranks of the newcomers. And of course, everyone on the left is saying that Macron has merely kowtowed to the far right. After all, lefties don't believe in borders, let alone controlling migration. And much has been made of the support for these laws that Macron got from Marine Le Pen and her so-called far-right National Rally Party. But the truth is that those laws would have passed without the National Rally votes. They had enough votes without having to rely on Le Pen's politicians. It went through with a very healthy majority of 349 votes to 186. Obviously, French politics is moving to the right in response to the will of the people. Or more accurately, French politics is listening to the people of France and being forced to react accordingly. It seems that it's no longer good enough to expect to get voted in and then lecture the proles on how woke the country must be so that their politicians can preen their woke virtue-signalling feathers on the world stage. Because the French people are growing more and more concerned about the levels of migration into their country and getting more and more upset about how it's affecting their lives. But the left is very upset at this, and one lefty politician, Aurelien Rousseau, has resigned in protest from his position as health minister, having only served five months in post. And others have been very vocal in criticism of the new legislation. So they will be hoping it fails at the next hurdle. Because before it becomes law, it has to be checked over by the French Constitutional Council, a sort of constitutional court. Yes, lawyers again. And that's because the French Prime Minister, Elizabeth Bourne, has said that Macron had some misgivings about how far some of these new laws go, so will be referring them to the Constitutional Council, with an answer expected within a month. And one wonders if the Constitutional Council will take the same view on international law as some of our judges in the UK do. So that treaties tying France to things like the UN and the ECHR are stronger than national law. And now this next piece comes from the Council's own 2021 report. For each decision, constitutional judges also endeavour to understand the context of the law being challenged. They review figures and research reports, as well as parliamentary or administrative reports. They ensure that their decisions are compatible with those rendered by the European Court of Human Rights, which adopts a concrete approach to judicial review. And further, it goes on to say that the Council is not restricted to looking at things in a strict legal sense. Could get very interesting for Macron. Because if it goes against him, he might be forced to water these new laws down in the face of lefty pressure. And that risks losing Le Pen's support. Le Pen would rise further in the polls. It could be another indicator at how far the reach of international law has extended into Western domestic law over the years. The trouble for France, though, is that they are hardwired into the ECHR by EU treaty law. They have no choice. They would have to Frexit first in order to get an ECHR exit. 
while the only thing holding the UK back is weak politicians. Now, the former immigration minister for the UK, Robert Jenrick, who resigned over the UK's new immigration laws not going far enough, has penned a piece in The Telegraph, giving the EU a lambasting for its hollow words and lack of ambition in dealing with the growing illegal migrant crisis in Europe. He says their recent internal deal to share the burden is just putting sticking plasters on gaping wounds. Time and again the EU has proven geopolitically impotent, he writes. And he pointed to the growing popularity of Geert Wilders in the Netherlands and said, His success is merely a foretaste of what is to come. The great irony is that by failing to do what is necessary, they are bringing about the political conditions for the failure of the entire European project. Mr Jenrick, I don't care about the European project. All you are telling me is that the further we isolate ourselves from the European project, the better and safer it will be for the UK. And while the French are attempting to tighten up these laws, they are relaxing visa requirements for Brits who own properties there. The amount of time they are allowed to stay in France has been extended to six months from the previous 90 days every 180 days. Stephen Jolly, who runs the France Visa Free Facebook group, said, This is a recognition that those with a home in France should be allowed to continue living in their homes in just the same way that they did before Brexit without having to make France their primary residence. Is it that recognition? Or wanting Brits in France longer so that they spend more of their money there? Now, when it comes to very wealthy people who own homes in different countries, I'm afraid I have a very, very small violin to play for them. And shock horror! The Christmas getaway has been stifled as it descends into chaos with cancelled trains and the shutting down of the Channel Tunnel. It must be Brexit. Blame Brexit will come the cries from the usual suspects as what is known as Frantic Friday looms when just about every car in the land will be motoring somewhere and every plane will be leaving and arriving crammed full of people. But it's not Brexit. All Eurotunnel services have been unexpectedly cancelled today after last-minute strike action was announced by French staff wreaking havoc on Christmas travel plans, reports The Independent. It seems that the workers' end-of-year bonus has been rejected by their French unions. And Storm Pier has also had an impact, causing damage to overhead cables that has caused train travel disruptions across the land. Climate change, climate change, climate change will come the clarion calls and the wagging fingers. But the eco-loons will be very pleased to learn that a green record was broken today. Across Britain, wind farms generated 21.8 gigawatts of electricity, 56% of all the power used, an all-time record amount of electricity. For 30 minutes between 8am and 8.30am, and look at the amount of wind it took to do it. Just shows how many turbines we'd need on a normal, low-breeze day to do the same. Especially as the experts are telling us that we're heading for something called global stilling, where wind speeds are expected to drop by 10% in the coming years. So it's a good job we're pedal to the metal for nuclear power, isn't it? Ah...